There is never a dull moment in politics, especially Pakistani politics. Just a few days ago, we were telling you about Imran Khan's thumping victory in the recent by-elections. Captain Khan won six out of eight seats. But the tables have turned on him today. Now, he might struggle to hold on to even one seat. Today, Imran Khan was disqualified as a lawmaker for a period of five years. He has been barred from holding public office by Pakistan's election commission. They found him guilty of hiding his assets. It doesn't end there. Imran Khan now faces criminal proceedings against him. The reaction has been sharp. Across Pakistan, protests erupted today. There are reports of clashes between cops and the supporters of Imran Khan. Some of them tried to climb over fences and enter the offices of the commission. The former Prime Minister rose to power on an anti-corruption platform. That's crucial to our story tonight. On the promise of delivering a naya or new Pakistan. One that is free of corruption entirely. It is a pitch that still finds resonance among the voters of Pakistan. So how will today's conviction impact Imran Khan? Will it damage his anti-corruption credentials? In the next few minutes, we'll discuss the fallout. Let's start with today's developments. How did Imran Khan get caught up in all this? It all began in August. A case was filed against him by his main political rivals, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN. What was the charge? It's about gifts. The gifts that Imran Khan received from visiting foreign dignitaries. The PMLN alleged that Khan sold these gifts and he didn't declare the transactions. Basically, he hid the money that he had received from selling these gifts. That was a charge. And Imran Khan has now been found guilty. Take a look. Today's decision is, I would say, today's decision is in accordance with the Constitution, yes, in accordance with the law of the land of Pakistan. And today is victory <laughs> for the democracy of Pakistan. Let's address some of the obvious questions here. First of all, is it illegal to sell such gifts? Well, there is no law that bars such a sale. But hiding this transaction is illegal. This bit is perhaps the most important part of this story. I'll tell you why in a bit. Question number two, did Imran Khan really do this? Did he make money by selling the gifts he received? Turns out he did. Last month, Imran Khan made an admission to the election commission. He had sold multiple presents. In fact, I have a list with me. Listen to this. A graph wristwatch, a pair of cufflinks, an expensive pen, a ring, and four Rolex watches. Now, initially, Imran Khan's party, the Pakistan tehreek e insaf or PTI, was reluctant to share these details. There was a lot of secrecy surrounding this. When asked, the PTI said that revealing the specifics might hamper Pakistan's international ties. But when the sale was disclosed, Imran Khan claimed he had paid the state treasury for these gifts before selling them off to buyers. But his explanation wasn't good enough for the election commission at least because for two years, Imran Khan didn't come clean about these transactions. He concealed them from his declarations as a lawmaker. To be precise, Imran Khan concealed the transactions that he made during two financial years, that is 2018 to 2019 and 2020 to 2021. And that is why he has been disqualified today. A four-member panel delivered the verdict today. One quote sums up the entire order. Pakistan's election commission has declared Imran Khan was involved in corrupt practices. Corrupt practices. The immediate implications of the verdict are clear. Imran Khan has been disqualified for five years. He will lose his seat in Pakistan's National Assembly and there would be a by-election to fill the vacant position. But the former Prime Minister is not out of options just yet. His team will challenge the disqualification in the Islamabad High Court. The PTI also plans to fight this on the streets. 
Earlier today, supporters of Imran Khan were asked to come out of their homes. Take a look. We will challenge that. We will challenge that. Under the law, the decision is absolutely a mockery of justice. This is against the law. We will challenge uh, this decision in the, in, the, in the Supreme Court. And soon after that, clashes broke out. The situation is tense. Even before the verdict came, security was stepped up across Islamabad. But knowing Imran Khan, the street battle will only intensify. Since being ousted from power back in April, Imran Khan has travelled around the country. He has been holding massive rallies and fiercely criticising the government of the day. His disqualification could add more momentum to this campaign. But can Pakistan afford a bitter political battle right now, when the country's economy is in a precarious position, when there is a spectre of debt defaults, when inflation is rearing its ugly head. Yes, let's talk about what happened a few moments ago. Islamabad got some relief. The Global Terror Financing Watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF, made an announcement. Pakistan has been removed from the FATF grey list after more than four years, which means that it will no longer be subjected to increased scrutiny. But can this alone solve Pakistan's economic woes? An unstable political environment is currently one of the biggest challenges before Pakistan. It is a problem that might not get resolved anytime soon. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.